Welcome to Soul Yoga Online. We hope you enjoy your virtual experience. Hi there. Welcome. I'm so excited to be with you guys. Do a little yoga, a little gentle yoga, about 60 minutes. Before we get started, making sure your setup is how you want it to be. Of course, um, as quiet as can be is ideal. If you're practicing from home, that may be a challenge. So take a few extra moments to, to see if you can seal the space a little bit. I won't be offering any music, so you can certainly put your own playlist on. Enjoy a little sound in your private space. And if you have a bolster, I always love a bolster, especially in gentle, and um, a blanket to cover up with after for Shavasana, maybe to sit on, and um, blocks are always handy too. If you don't have those things at home, you can, you can use something else or nothing at all. Just, just work with what you have, it's perfectly fine. So without further ado, let's come on to our mat. And I thought we would start with a little bit of movement actually, and then work our way into some deeper stillness as we go today. Shall we? Good. So come into a comfortable seat and I'll join you there. I like to sit up on um, a block or a blanket or again, a bolster. If um, your hips are a little bit tighter, you can also sit on a chair. In fact, I'm gonna bring a chair into the practice today and um, maybe invite you guys to use that periodically as well. So if you have a chair, I forgot to mention that, um, a folding chair or some sort of stable, not on wheels chair, you can bring that in too. Again, welcome and thank you for, thank you for being here with us and, um, and choosing to practice together with the soul community. Even though we're apart, we are able to be together in this way. So let's start. So you could actually also begin seated on a chair. That would be a really nice way to start. Um, you could just place the chair in the center of your mat. I'm gonna leave mine off to the side for now, but that's a great option. I'll sit on my bolster. You could sit on your blanket as well. And make sure that you just have some comfort here as we settle in. Comfort for you. And the beauty of this home practice is that you indeed can really tailor this practice to your needs without any concern or worry or ego. So do that, sitting up nice and tall. So we'll take just a moment here to settle in. Maybe close your eyes if you haven't already. And dive right into your breath. Maybe a few falling out breaths. Just a signal to the nervous system that this is the beginning of a safe time and a safe space for you to let your guard down, for you to relax, for you to Stop scanning outwardly and begin to scan inward. A few more falling out breaths. And as you do that, just notice what shifts in your body 
not just your physical body, but your emotional body, your mental body. In practice of yoga, we explore all, all aspects of us, all sheaths of the being. And sometimes we look at them separately for the purpose of inquiry and study. But the yogis know and understand that we are whole dynamic beings. So noticing all the parts of you today as you practice with loving kindness without judgment. You may be carrying quite a bit of stress or tension or boredom or anxiety or anger or any level of thoughts or emotions. And none of it is wrong. None of it is meant to be pushed aside. It is all meant to be witnessed as though you could watch yourself like you're the starring actress in your own movie. Ah, so we'll come back to this witness, this observation, but for now, let's start to move a little bit, just get into the body. Start to circle your torso, right? So taking some circular movements with the upper body. And you can make these small or large. You could grab onto your knees or your thighs. But just start to circle. And both directions would be a good thing to explore. Doesn't matter what the pace is. Just let whatever organic pace happens. Just follow the body's lead. If you feel like, oh, that's pretty fast and you're aware of that, then maybe Slow it down. I really encourage you, as always, whether you're in studio or at home, to listen to your body. This is an opportunity to hear the messages coming slowly to stillness once again. Keep that circular movement moving, the head only, not gigantic circles, small circles. Small circles in both directions. Let the jaw hang loose and be relaxed. Ah, keep breathing. If it feels okay, you can start to make those circles a little bigger. Now working into more of the musculature of the neck. And if it starts to feel painful, then just Make the circles a little smaller, focusing on lubricating the joints there. Keeping the jaw relaxed and the face relaxed, slowly coming to stillness again. Ah. Let those eyes close and notice what you're aware of. Hmm. Hello, body. Explore the shoulders in a similar way, little circles. And then maybe just one shoulder at a time. I'm starting with my right. Just see which one calls to you first and then the other. Hmm. We'll attempt to explore the whole body here in this, this allotted time together. So we're gonna to touch on just as many of the joints as we can and muscle groups. But, and then perhaps both together and you could certainly be doing all of this from a chair right if you feel uncomfortable on the floor and then come to stillness again pause momentarily notice what you're aware of take a nice breath in and out before we move on dropping the right ear towards the right shoulder not to reach the shoulder, but just to lengthen through the opposite side of the neck. And I'll be mirroring you, but hopefully your eyes are closed. Ah. And then the other side. So again, just a little bit of a check-in, a gauge. Where are you today in your body, in your mind? Ah, 
how are your emotions? How is your heart? And come back to center. Just taking some stretching of the face. Make a really big face. Open the mouth. Stick the tongue out. Ah, look a little ridiculous in the comfort of your own home. And circle your jaw a little bit too. Some big or small circles. It might also be a good time for just a little massaging of the jaw, the temples, the forehead. And please feel free if any of these invitations to movement or to a posture, if that feels exceptionally right to you and you want to stay longer, stay. This is the beauty of a home practice. You can get distracted and go down that rabbit hole that is where you need to go. So for now, you can choose to follow along and I'm just rubbing my scalp a little bit now on the back of my head. Ah, sometimes just this mere notion of touch can help soften, soften our, our mental body and soften our nervous system. And sometimes it has the opposite effect. So be aware of that too. Hands and wrists a little bit, please. Just stretching out your hands, squeezing, clutching, and then releasing, squeezing and releasing. And then a little circling of the wrists too, both directions. And then the fingers, give them a little bit of backward bending. Maybe just one at a time or all four together you can give a nice stretch to the forearm. Ah, just noticing, how am I showing up today? What's there? Maybe a little rub of the forearms, particularly if you're doing a lot of touching of the keyboard or holding of your phone and texting, right? Or maybe it's the remote control for you or the car, steering wheel, right? The hands and the forearms do a phenomenal, a phenomenal amount of work. And then just shake it off, shake it off. A little gentle twist, left hand off to right knee, lengthen up, just a one breath in here, lengthen, exhale, twist. And back to the center, just exploring here. Inhale, lengthening up, exhaling. How is your belly? How's your digestion? Are you processing? all that there is to process now in life and coming back to the center. And before we begin to get into the lower body a little bit, let's check in with the throat and the voice and the heart, right? A little bit more subtle. Lean your arms back behind you, or if you're on a bolster or on a chair, you can grab the edge or reach behind the bolster and just gently lift the heart up. So the neck is a little bit exposed, chin reaching up slightly. Ah, notice what that invites, maybe a deeper breath. Maybe it invites your eyes to fling open. Maybe your eyes close softly and you can feel into the sensation there. Just broadening across the heart, opening up the neck, reaching the head back if it feels safe to do so. And come back to the center. Hmm. And I'm going to invite you into a chant to open our practice. You can choose just to listen. You can choose to hum along. You can choose to sing along if you know it. I'll run through the Gayatri Mantra. This is known as the mother of all mantras. You've probably heard it. And at the end, we'll join in just one round of OM together. So just kind of clearing your throat, <clears throat> right? Taking a swallow, perhaps even. And then a big breath in together. Empty it out. And again, you can join or just listen. Om Bhur Bhur Vastwaha 
Tatsavitur Varenium Argo de Vasia di Mahi Yuyona Prachodaya. Together, one round of Om, deep breath in. The sound that encompasses all sound. Ah, oh, mm. The sound of the universe. And just notice that in your chest and in your throat, in your ears and in your head and in your mouth. Ah, we are all together in this sea of ohms and this sea of life. And we may be independent and boundaried on many levels, but we are connected at the level of the heart. And bring your palms together. And you may begin again always, right? Whether it's the new day or a new breath, or perhaps it's a birthday and a new year. It's up to you. So I invite you in this moment to begin again. And as we enter a little bit more asana in our practice and pranayama, just take with you that beginner curious mind, freshly, curiously, inquisitively, looking into your practice, your body, your mind, your spirit. And you'll bring these hands onto the mat. We'll come into a table pose for a moment. So just shifting as you need to, repositioning, getting a little cushion under your knees if you'd like. Hands right under the shoulder. And we'll just gently explore some movements of the spine here. You can do that intuitively or with a little structure. You can drop the belly down, lift the heart up, gaze forward. And then on an exhale, curl the tailbone under, tuck the chin in, round the spine, and exhale. Work to move in time with the breath. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, round the spine, and see the breath. One more time, big breath in. And exhale, round the spine. We're gonna move along fairly steadily here. And again, come back down to the earth for a little steadiness and heaviness. Tuck your toes under and sit back on your heels. Feel the arches of the feet get a little stretch. Feel free to stay leaning on your hands or a couple blocks under the hands. And just breathe into the soles of the feet for a moment, please. Notice your breath here. Lengthening up through the spine. And then pressing up to balancing on your knees. And let the tops of the feet come down to the floor again. If your kneecaps or knees are tender, just place a nice extra cushion under the, under the knees. Bring the hands to the lower back, either fingertips pointing down, or you can just place the backs of the hands against the sacrum. If you like a little bit more stretch across the shoulders and the chest, interlace the fingers. So you choose which arms work for you. And then just draw the elbows back, lift the heart up, similar to what we did just a moment ago, seated, open up the chest, Expose the neck, reach up with your eyes. Just feel that openness through the front of the body, the belly a little bit. Just the gentlest of openings across the heart. And then back to neutral. Shake out the arms. 
sweep the arms up over the head, reaching them straight up, spread through the palms. And then exhale, press the arms down, empty the breath out. I'm gonna spin to face you, stay there. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, arms down. Two more, inhale, arms up, breath in. And exhale, arms down, breath out. Good, so pause here. We're gonna take our time coming to standing and this is a really good place to actually bring the chair in if that's um, an option for you, right? I'll show you, but you don't have to. Bring the left foot forward, I'm preparing for a fairly angular variation of our lunge. So you're gonna keep that right knee under the right hip and the left knee over the left ankle. So instead of lunging forward as we often do, stay fairly upright. Reach the right arm straight up, and then pressing that right hip forward, reaching back. So using the chair, you can opt to just keep the hands on the chair, or you can press that left knee into the chair. But opening up through the front of the right side of the body a wee bit, and then release back down. Come to table, or just switch sides. Bring the right knee forward. If you're using the chair, again, you can just hold on to the edge of the chair. Bring that right knee forward. Try to, try to stay fairly upright here again, stacking the knee over the ankle in a bit of a 90 degree angle. Left arm reaches up and a little bit of a back bend here. You can also take that left hand behind the head, drop the head into the hand, open up the front body. Couple breaths here. Ah. And then moving right along, if you have the chair, you can use that to help you up to standing. We'll meet in a bit of a forward fold. You can also just place the hands on the floor, bring that back foot forward, and we'll all meet together in a forward fold. So if you're using the chair, just placing the hands on the edge of the chair to support you in exploring a little bit of opening through the back of the legs. The chair is not just for support, it's actually for deepening. We have this perception that if we bring a chair into our practice, it's because we can't do something. But I want you to consider that the chair actually will help you deepen your practice and will open you up to new possibilities. I use a chair all the time in my practice and I'm pretty flexible, so it doesn't have anything to do with that. Couple more breaths in this forward fold variation, wherever you are, bend and straighten the knees a little bit, and just allowing the head to hang below the heart, let that be a primary focus. Maybe a little side to side movement, let the arms sway a little side to side perhaps. Breathing, most importantly. And just anything that feels good here, shake out the head a little bit. When's the last time you were upside down? Try a little bit of that every day. Right, and then curl up to standing. If you're using the chair, just put your hands on the edge. Wherever we are, we'll meet standing. Curling up nice and slow. Once you get to the top, revisit. The rolling of the shoulders, as we did when we were seated. Pause that. Tiny little circles with the head, just repeating what we did seated. And then some larger circles with the upper torso. So just hands on the hips and take the torso in some circles. Side to side maybe in both directions. Mm. And then come back to standing upright. And again, I'll turn to face you. Just pause here, breathe, feel Tadasana or mountain pose. Just that sense of feeling grounded in your two feet, rising up through the crown of the head, hands and arms relaxed at your sides. You feel as though you're, you're stable. Your posture is steady. 
Hmm. And we'll work right into a little bit of balance here. Never hurts to tap into that. So if you need the wall, use the wall. Also a perfect place to just use the support of the chair. Rikshasana, you can bring the sole of the right foot to the calf and touch the toes on the ground. You can bring it all the way up to the inner thigh. Here we are. Either keep a hand on the chair or lengthen up through the crown of the head and take your arms anywhere. Right up. Nice stretched out tree. Little more grounded tree. Hands at the heart center. Feel the sole of the standing leg. Push down and rise up through the crown of the head. Notice what you're aware of in this concentrated state of the balance. Let go of any harsh judgment. And just be present to your breath. There is movement. The body is alive. You're not a piece of cardboard. You can't be perfectly still. Feel that movement, embrace it, go with the flow of it. Mm. Staying a little bit longer as we transition from day to day, season to season, whatever's going on in the world, whether it's a pandemic or just a new day, our balance shifts and changes constantly. Just give yourself permission to check in with it day to day with curious, new, inquisitive eyes. And let's switch sides when you're ready. Release gently with care. I'm switching into my right foot, right? You can continue to use the chair or not. A wall might be nearby for you or no support at all and just play with feeling the movement in your body. Ah, trust that your sides are different for a reason if they are. Instead of trying to force one to be the same as the other, allow those differences to just be there. And again, I invite you to witness. Witness yourself. Watch how you react to the ebbs and flows in your yoga practice. This is what prepares us in our broader life. And that capacity to witness. That capacity to be still in the face of turmoil, chaos, judgment from ourselves or others. Get a little taller here. Bring a little courage or broadness across the chest. <sighs> Stay a little longer. Even if you've fallen out, just perhaps come back in. Maybe add some broader, more expansive arms. Or if it's a struggle today, just bring a hand down to the chair, to the wall, or even bring the foot down. Hmm. Couple more breaths here. It's the simplest parts of the yoga practice that can offer us the most profound challenge sometimes. Release slowly. Shake it out. Shake out the arms and the legs a little bit. So our goal in this yoga practice really is to not have any goals, right? And just to witness, just to be present. And maybe as a byproduct, we become a little bit more present or increase our blood flow or decrease our tension. Take a wide stance now. Just a nice wide stance on your mat. Doesn't matter which direction you face, you choose. We'll just come into warrior two, and you can choose which side to go to first. So for warrior two, back toes angle forward, front toes 
turn towards the front or back of your mat, whichever orientation you are. Allow the front knee to bend significantly and let yourself feel a little bit of a challenge. A little bit of a challenge. You can certainly keep that chair handy for a little support on your hand, or you can even bring the chair underneath the thigh. I won't demo that one today, but you can use it. If you're feeling like you have stability in your legs, float the arms up. If you feel you need to dig a little deeper and burn into the intensity of your experience right now, then go for it. This pose allows for that. There's a fierce component. If there's tension in the neck and the shoulders, I invite you to take the arms out today. Just let them drape behind the back. Get into your roots, into your legs. Feel the power there. Wiggle your toes a little bit. Feel the softness there. So this is both fierce and strong and soft and receptive. We're gonna stay a little longer. Invitation is to mm, maybe deepen into more of a challenge. Maybe the challenge for you is easing off a little bit. Notice where you land in that spectrum and allow yourself to choose. You can gaze over the front middle finger if the arms are extended. Or you can close your eyes, relax a bit, jaw soft, a little bit longer, just exploring. Stay soft in your jaw, relax your face. And feel the legs here, feel those thighs. Perhaps they respond with a little bit of trembling, awakening, response, and stand up. Straighten the front leg. Pivot the feet so that you're just standing wide again. Close your eyes. Place your hands on your heart center, on your belly. Ah. Just feel into that aliveness in the legs and the awakeness. Feel into your breath body. Ah. Again, the simplest aspects of this posture and this practice of yoga can be the most profound. Let's come into the other side. And give yourself permission to, to ease your way in. If you need more support, move that chair around. Move yourself around, perhaps. Ah, see what kind of capacity you have on this side. Sometimes it feels good to sort of dip down and rise up and dip down and rise up. But get to a place where you can hold with some steadiness, please. Figure out your arms. Do they want to extend and be fierce and focused and powerful? Or do you need a little softness? Bring some awareness to, to your abdomen here. I even felt myself just place my hands on my belly and my lower back, almost scooping or tucking the tailbone down and drawing the lower belly in a little. As you do that, you can feel the front of the hip open and extend through that back leg. From there, you can feel the crown of the head reach up Ah, fill yourself with breath. Check in with that gaze. Where does it land? Close your eyes if you feel as though you can without falling over. And breathe. Ah, keep that jaw soft. We have this tendency to bring tension into our hands and our feet and our face when we get tense. Relax here. Let the strength and the effort be in the legs. Couple more breaths here, guys. You're doing great. 
I can't see you, but I imagine that you are. And then release, feel that washing over the body with relief. Pivot those feet again so they're just turning. Hold yourself with wide legs for a moment. Place the hands behind the back. Lift the chest one more time as though we did earlier on, exposing the clavicle bones, reaching the chin up. And this time, allow yourself to fold forward. Nice wide stance, lead with the chest. This would be a wonderful place for two blocks if you have them, or to bring the chair in again. Really nice place to bring the chair and to rest on the edge of the chair halfway, your choice. Opening up through the back body, the hamstrings, feel free to bend one knee and shift a little side to side here. Yours doesn't have to look like anybody's but yours. Again, the beauty of a home practice, right? You don't have to worry about anything except following your own guidance, right? Ah, a couple more times, whether you're holding still or whether you are shifting side to side, maybe folding all the way forward, dropping the head down perhaps. Couple falling out breaths here. Hmm. And then we'll rise back up. Soft bend to the knees, take your time, slowly rise. And notice what you're aware of here. I'm noticing I'm aware of the return of my children to the bubble of my world. I can hear them. Hopefully your space is still quiet and calm. And just check in with your breath, check in with your heart. Check in with your face and your jaw. Close your eyes here. I'm gonna work with standing postures a little bit more and then we'll head back to the ground. So toe heel your feet closer together. Coming back to standing, right? So feet a little bit apart just a little bit apart, a couple inches or a little bit more, but still supporting you. And then just a little soft bend to the knees, like a half chair, a mini chair, right? Or mini Utkatasana and then stand up again. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, half chair, sit those hips back. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hips back. Inhale, reach up, stretch the hips forward a little bit, reach back, and then exhale, sink the hips back. You can start to go deeper as the body is warmed and ready. Exhaling, sink back into a deeper chair. Inhale, reach up, lift up, lean back. Exhale. You could literally do this with the chair, holding your hands on the back of the chair instead of reaching them up. So a few more times here, just pumping through a few squats, essentially. Inhaling up and back, exhaling down. If you like the way this makes you feel, right, building a little bit of heat and oxygen, the energy flow, then keep doing it. If you're like sweating and you feel creaking your joints, then do them really small or stop. But if you can, Pause and hold one of them. Home to the heart, or to the thighs. Check in with your breath. Could be a little mini, could be a nice deep one. You choose. If you want a lot of challenge today, lift your heels up and try to fuse those calf muscles to really lift the heels. You just do it one foot at a time too, lifting one heel or the other. Ah, nice deep breaths. Both heels down, 
Rise up, stretch back, both feet on the ground, straight legs, and palms to the heart. We return to Vrikshasana one more time, and we'll make our way back to the ground. So always same offering, right? Chair for support, wall for support, any variation, right? So come back to tree. You were here already once, but this is new, right? You've done a few grounding postures, and now see how your body feels balancing. Take the arms up, perhaps. Keep them at the heart center. You choose. Keep the face relaxed, the jaw soft. You can Sometimes it's nice to bring in the ujjayi breath here, just to help with focus. Sounding breath in through the nose, down through the back of the throat, out through the nose. Five more breaths here. One or two more breaths for you. Wobbling is okay. Coming in and out of the posture is also welcome. And then switch sides. Grounding through the opposite foot now, rising through the crown of the head, softening your jaw. You don't have to rush ahead into a level or a trauma that doesn't suit you. Just stay where you feel steady and stable. And then perhaps explore with curiosity. Where can you go in your balance today? Maybe the ujjayi breath supports you. Five more breaths wherever you are. Hmm. One more breath, perhaps. And then release. And we'll slowly transition all the way onto our backs. I'm going to invite you to take a minute here to make that transition as you wish. If you feel like you still need a little bit of movement, go through a nice forward fold, perhaps even a sun salute if you feel like you need that. Depending on how you'd like to get back down to the ground, you might wanna use the chair. I'm gonna move it out of the way and come back to you. Just take your time and you'll find your way in the next minute or so all the way down onto your back. This is a great place for a little bit of transitional movement and exploration. Keep breathing. Use your intuition. As you come onto your back over the next several breaths, allow yourself to be supported 
with some props, right? Or keep them handy, I should say. We'll work into Shavasana in a few moments, right? But first, a little bit of back work, twisting, some work into the hips a bit. So just have your props handy. And as you come onto your back, give your knees a little squeeze and just rock a little bit side to side, pressing your lower back into the floor. Give those knees a little squeeze and then take a circular movement here. Right, knees in a circle. In fact, your lower body really in a bit of a circular shape so you can massage the low back. Both directions would be recommended. And then just let it become a little bit more freeform. The knees may part. You might rock a little side to side. You might stick your legs out wide. Might be more like a happy baby for you. Just think about the low back for you and really massaging it and bringing some contact to the earth on the lower back. Don't forget to breathe. I'm just kind of rocking, rocking, rocking. Rocking a little bit more and then starting to move towards stillness. <sighs> and then send the legs up. Point and flex the feet, roll out the ankles a little bit. Spread the toes. Still working to relax the face and the jaw if there's any more tension there. And then just bending and straightening the legs a little bit, kicking your feet. Nice, and then set your feet down on the floor. Both feet on the ground. Press the heels into the ground, lift the hips, not a lot, just a little bit. Rock them a little side to side. And then bring them to stillness, press the hips up a little bit higher, not too high. And then release back down. Walk the feet together, let the knees go wide. Soles of the feet together, I should say. Soles of the feet touching, big toes touching, knees wide. You can hold the legs up if you need to. Just a few breaths here. Breathing into the inner thighs, the belly, the chest, the head, the throat, the neck. And then help the legs come back together. Feet flat on the ground again. And this time, knees off to the right, twisting. So knees off to the right. You can draw the knees up as much as you want. You can let the knees split apart. The objective is just to feel at ease here. You can splay the arms out wide in a bit of a T-shape or cactus arms. Notice your breath. Ah. As you come onto your back here, just notice what you're aware of. See what's there in the mind and the body and the emotions. Just let it flow, be the witness to yourself. Flow back in through the center and come off to the other side. Feel free to rock a little bit in between in the middle or squeeze the knees into the center, just coming back to neutral if you need to. And then off to the other side. This is meant to be real gentle in nature. Nothing overly strenuous or pushing or forcing anything in the system. I'm focusing mainly on relaxing the nervous system, harmonizing the body with an overall stretch and just some nice, easy breathing. Hmm, a few falling out breaths on this side. You may notice your digestion thanking you, right? You might feel this in your spine and your hips. Twists are so lovely for 
so many systems in the body, muscular, skeletal, digestive, all the layers touched as the spine is rotated. And come back to the center. A rock a little bit in the center. Hmm. And then place the feet back on the ground. Just gonna work in the neck a little bit. Bring your hands up above the head, interlace the fingers, and place the hands under the head. Basically interlace your hands under your head. Elbows out wide. And then take a big breath in. And empty it out. <sighs> See if you can feel that breath rising up towards the chest. Big breath in. And out. On the next out breath, we'll lift the head. So breathe in again. And then exhale, elbows come together. Head lift, chin towards the chest. And see the breath out. And then inhale, head down, arms wide. Breathe in, fill the chest. And when you're ready, exhale, lift the head, elbows in, stretch the back of the neck. Empty all the breath out. Breathe in as you lower the head. And then one more time. Empty the breath out. Squeeze the elbows together. Lift the head. Empty the breath. Chest. Touching the chin or chin touching the chest, perhaps. But mostly just feeling sensation, stretching sensation in the back of the neck. Release the head down. Nice. Bring the arms alongside you. Fingertips towards the heels. Feet back on the ground, feet close together, but they don't have to be touching. And then lift the hips once again. Lift the hips a little bit more than last time. If you have a yoga block and it's in arm's reach, bring that in. You may choose to slide that under your low back and rest your sacrum on it. Otherwise, just hover here. Let the legs work a little, that's okay too. You can choose chest rising towards the chin. This is the bridge pose. Little opening across the chest, the heart, power in the legs, soft jaw, please. Whether you're using the block to support you or not, start to come down either onto a block or all the way onto the floor. Couple breaths here. Just feel the effects of bridge pose. We'll do it once again. Should you choose to, you can interlace your arms underneath you. If that suits your shoulders, really pressing the hips high. If that suits your hips and your low back. Also the previous alternative of just lifting the hips, placing them on the block. You choose a little bit more restful and restorative, a little bit more energizing and vigorous. You also could choose to just rest on your back as I am. A couple more breaths exploring your body, your practice, your breath the whole essence of who you are in this moment. And then release back down, please, with care. Notice what's there. Invitation to bring the soles of the feet together again. Let the knees open up wide. You can place your hands on your belly. Mm. Breath in and breath out. And notice how this posture lands in your body. Does it feel like a stretch on your inner thighs? Does it feel comforting? Right? Noticing your emotional observations or experience. 
vulnerability or openness, comfort or another sensation. You might prefer, I know I sometimes do, knees together and feet wide. You can try that, see if that lands. Really just slowing things down here as we come to the close of our time together. And I wanna really invite you to just take the lead in your practice here. If there's any final movements your body needs, or if you're really feeling like you have some time and space here, I invite you to set up for a longer Shavasana and or a Shavasana following, or um, follow Shavasana, I should say, with a meditation and some pranayama. Very nice option if you still have that chair nearby is to put your lower leg up, lower legs up on the seat of the chair. It's a variation of legs up wall. If you're near a wall in your home, this would be a nice time to do legs up wall instead of or as your Shavasana. But we've come to that time where we start to shift our bodies into a resting pose. And if you have the luxury of pressing pause on this and you wanna continue your practice here before Shavasana, by all means, use this instruction as you wish. But if you're starting to transition into Shavasana, get comfy. If you have that bolster, put it under your knees or under your spine or your heart for a little soft opening. Cover up with a blanket if you're at all chilled. And I'll be here with you minding the time. Feeling into the breath. Allow your eyes to close. Make sure that you're comfortable and safe and warm in this most integral and potent part of the practice, just allowing the benefits of it to filter down into the nervous system, into the bones, into the recesses of the mind. Hmm. Perhaps a few falling out breaths. <sighs> Make sure the jaw is very relaxed and at ease. And just go into a little bit of stillness here. As I said, I'll be with you and I'll mind the time and I'll bring you out in just a few minutes, maybe three or four. If you want to stay a little longer, maybe set your own timer.
Beginning to bring a little bit of awareness once again to your breath. Wiggling your fingers and your toes. And the Baker Park bells have rung, indicating the end of our hour together. Feel free, as I said, to stay. And we'll close us out with the Gayatri Mantra once again. If it's becoming more familiar, hum or sing along with it. And then we'll close with a round of OM together. You can take a clearing breath with me if you wish. OM BUR BUR VASTWAHA Tat savitur varenian Argo devasya dimahi Dio yona prachodaya Together the sound of Om. Namaste. Thank you for bringing us into your home and doing yoga with us. And I hope to see you tomorrow. Take care. Visit us online at soulyoga.org for details on a private session or a public class. Namaste.